All right, what's going on everybody? So yesterday was the 2018 Video Game Awards and I did the live stream to, you know, watch it with the viewers and do a live reaction viewing. But um, I still wanted to just do a overall recap uh, and, and review and give my thorough thoughts on, you know, all the winners, all the announcements and all the trailers that we saw last night. So I'm gonna try to swiftly go through that now. So let's start out with the award winners. So let's start out with the most important award, Game of the Year. Now for the record, I don't look at these um, media uh, game award shows as like the gospel. They're not the, you know, the end all be all authority on what is and what isn't. You know, this is strictly for entertainment really. So, you know, regardless of what they deem to be Game of the Year, listen, if you feel God of War isn't Game of the Year, then it's not Game of the Year. That's how I look at it. Regardless of who would have won, God of War wouldn't have, would, would have been my Game of the Year. You know, I made the video on it just a few days ago. Listen, God of War is my Game of the Year. It doesn't matter what anybody else say. You know, people are, you know, all people are equal in, in their opinion. So there's no authority on it. But God of War won Game of the Year. You know, it, it aligned up with, with my opinion. The only other competitor, if we're being real, was Red Dead Redemption 2. And I just, I think once people saw past, you know, the glitz and the glamour and the spoken mirrors of Red Dead and being so amazed by the open world, I think once the, the veil was gone and the rose-colored rock star glasses were gone, people saw, kind, kind of saw through that. And the game honestly has a lot of flaws. It wasn't the most complete game you know it wasn't the most complete game in every dimension to, to me and it took I, I just feel like i saw it quicker than other people now more the more and more weeks pass by and the more and more people play uh you know red dead redemption they start to see flaws that they they didn't see before you know they they start to see some systems and the the way that game is designed that it certain parts of that game are it's a is a facade and it's kind of empty you know it's it's still props possibly you know a second runner up or third runner up for game of the year absolutely not saying the game is trash at all i gave it an 8.8 .8. but to me it wasn't the complete game that god of war was so you know I, I agree god of war uh was was game of the year best action game uh dead cells won that i never played dead cells um best action adventure game god of war won that also uh, so God of War won two awards, the best role-playing game, uh, Monster Hunter World. No, I don't really have any opinion on that. I, I didn't play Monster Hunter. Uh, best game direction, God of War. Oh, so God of War actually won three awards. I thought it was two. Um, best narrative, uh, Red Dead Redemption 2. I actually disagreed with that. I, I you know, felt detroit should have won that for you know obviously several reasons i would have even took life is strange too i've never played life is strange but from what i know about that game you know i think that is you know it was it was the better choice for that um best ongoing game fortnite you know we, we saw that coming best art direction return of the Oberdin. i have no idea what that is i don't even think i've even seen that game um but okay uh best score or or music Red Dead Redemption 2. Red Dead Redemption 2 has a great soundtrack, but I disagree with this. You know, I would have, some people said that, you know, Octopath should have won. And I haven't, I didn't play Octopath, but I did listen to some of the soundtrack. I, I would have to agree with that. I don't think, you know, that game had the best uh, OST or, or music. Um, best audio design. Red Dead Redemption 2 also won that. Uh, best independent game. Celeste. Best performance. Roger Clark as Arthur Morgan. Um, Early in the show, it, it was definitely looked like a, a Red Dead Redemption sweep, and it was looking like Red Dead Redemption was going to win everything. Games for Impact, Celeste, Best Mobile Game, Florence, Best VR, AR Game, Astrobot, Rescue Mission. That game was praised to hell. I think some people were surprised at how good that game turned out to be, uh, especially, you know, being uh, a, a, a VR, you know, a, AR game. So some people were just really shocked by how good the i think it was the level design in that game was i can't i can't play vr games unfortunately well i don't really care that i can't i, I don't think i wouldn't say unfortunately you know vr games make me sick I, I just don't think they're at the point yet um with technology where vr is is an experience that everybody can experience I, it still makes some people nauseous so i i can't play video, vr games um best fighting game dragon ball 
fighters uh, won that. No disagreement here. I, you know, I felt it was going to win. Best family game, Overcooked 2. Never played Overcooked, but I, I think I called that in, in my predictions. Um, best strategy game, Into the Breach. Never even, I don't know what the hell that is. Best sports racing game, Forza Horizon 4. Um, you know, I thought that was going to, I said that could either be FIFA or Forza, you know. But uh, Forza usually, the Horizon, at, at least, series usually wins an award like that. Best multiplayer game, Fortnite. Best Student Game, Combat 2018. Best Debut Indie Game, The Messenger. Best Esports Game, Overwatch. Best Esports Player, Sonic Fox. So, listen, Sonic Fox is is definitely an amazing player. I, you know, because I, I watch all the major tournaments, even the smaller tournaments. So, I've seen him play. I've seen, I've been watching Sonic Fox for years. Like, when he was struggling to like win a major tournament because he was this YOLO god. And anybody who who knows, you know, who's been watching him knows exactly what that means, you know. Um, so I, I've seen him rise and win multiple multiple Evos. Is he an absolute weirdo? The dude is a top notch cringe worthy weirdo, bro. Like and I So but but I can't take away from him. Dude's dude's a beast at the at several fighting games you know a lot of people doubted him saying that oh he could never cross over and, and play play fighters he could never uh play marvel and he dominated a lot of people because you know he's he's usually a, a nether realm mortal Kombat, and justice type of player he crossed over and you know was able to beat a lot of pros at their own game so he's a he's a top notch not what notch weirdo cringeworthy i can't stand when he talks sometimes but he's he's a beast at, at, at fighting games. Um, best esports team, Cloud Nine. Best esports coach, Reaper. Best esports event. They had a lot of freaking esports categories this year. Um, best esports event, uh, League of Legends World Championship. Best esports host, uh, Fe Jocks. Best esports moment, C9 comeback, and content creator of the year, Ninja. Um, so yeah, now let's get into the show and, and the in the announcement. So the the main thing I didn't like about the show was two, a few things. One, it, it ran a little bit too long. It it felt bloated. It didn't have like the cringe worthy uh, promotion and, and marketing like last like was it last year when they had the Shik Hydro Man or something. There was no like terrible moments like that exactly, but it still felt very long and, and bloated. You know, it, I feel like they could have cut some of this fat out. And the other problem was this this show was like three hours long, but they but the show wasn't all about the the award winners, right? Because some major categories they announced on the fly, you know, where they like, oh, the winner for this award is so and so, and then they skip right past into the next award. They because you know, they choose some awards um to have like a formal you know, walk up and, 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 you know, acceptance speech, but other, other categories that are major categories, they just like announced the winner and skipped right over it. Those winners for the, the studio for that game didn't really get a moment. I'm like, but y'all are filling this three hour show with all this bloat, all this bloating and all these, you know, moments we don't really need, but you're like robbing those people of their moment. And I'm like, for, for like minor categories, I can understand you skipping right past that. But for major categories, I'm like, why are you doing that? You know, like we would rather see the winners come on stage and, and speak and speak about, you know, their game and give their, uh, you know, give their acceptance and everything like that. Um, of course, you know, with gamers, gamers are just awkward people in general sometimes. Uh, the ones that happen to be in these award shows. So, you know, there was a few cringe-worthy worthy moments. I can't say it was the worst. Uh, I think the production of the show has gotten better over the few years. Jeff Keighley is definitely doing a, a better job. And I, I do think it's, it is it is getting better, uh, maybe as far as, like, pacing and an overall production. Just to talk about, you know, some of the announcements and trailers, I'm going to try to get to all of them. Uh, Marvel Ultimate Alliance 3, the Black Order, exclusively for Switch. Now listen to me. I could care less that this thing is exclusive for Switch. I would have no interest in Ultimate Alliance regardless, okay? I, I played I played one. I played a little bit of two. I, th I think two was the one that was trash. And, like, nobody cared about this game prior. You didn't hear nobody talking about Ultimate Alliance, you know, this generation. You never heard the words Ultimate Alliance this generation. Nobody, you didn't hear nobody say, oh, man, I, 
I'm really hoping that they make another Ultimate Alliance. And let's be honest, the game the game looked trash. It looked like uh, some some 30 frame um, flash mobile game. It didn't look good. So regardless that nobody was asking for it, because there was a lot of people fake hype when nobody was like checking or hoping for a sequel to Ultimate Alliance 2. On top of that, the game looked bad. Okay, it looked bad. The animations looked terrible. It looked it looked extremely dated. So even so even it if it had looked good i would have been like okay but it looked terrible <laughs> so it just looked bad not a game i would i would check for regardless i don't care what platform it on i'm not i would not be checking for that uh rocket league mclaren pack you know they still support rocket league far cry new dawn so uh we got the far cry leak prior to the show and, you know, we already knew it was going to be some backlash, some people calling it the, the SJW Far Cry and everything like that. And we see this trend and this agenda in the industry that some people think is going on, uh, not denying th that there isn't one. Um, and the two antagonists are actually these uh, two these two black females. Um, some people thought they, they might have been the protagonist, but they're actually the antagonist. The game takes place after Far Cry 5, which I'm actually playing right now. Um, I think they said uh, maybe a decade, a decade, maybe, I think it might have been 14 years, I heard, um, after Far, the events of Far Cry 5. And this is this is a standalone game, but it's actually not being sold at like $60. You know, I just pre-ordered it for like 30 for $30, I think it was on Green Man Gaming. Um, so, yeah, and, and listen, it all I'll say is I understand, like, people don't like to don't like the feeling of, of of them they don't like the thought of their game being hijacked for an agenda but my only thing is i have to say is you can't say because if we're being real real with ourselves every far cry since three has typically been the same i did not play primal but i played every other every other far cry far cry 3 is the same as far cry 4 minimal difference far cry 4 is the same as far cry 5 minimal difference so this is with a few differences dawn new dawn is probably going to be the same as far cry 5 and the rest of them with a few exceptions so you can't be like oh i love far cry 3 4 and 5 and suddenly be like oh i hate new dawn why because of because of the the upfront presentation no if if you like the game because of the gameplay you can't and it's going to probably going to be the same thing you can't suddenly hate new dawn especially when you haven't played it so that's just if we're being real with ourselves so um i'm going to play that game uh, Hades, um, that, that was a, that was the game made by the same studio that made, ah, uh, god damn it, what's, what are they called? Transistor? I think it was Transistor. Um, I know Jack Mujani is gonna like that game. Uh, it looks cool. Not, I wasn't all the way into Transistor. Um, I might be thinking of the, of the wrong game. I can't, I think it was Transistor. So I'm, that's not really something that I'm, I'm looking, uh, for too personally. Um, Scavengers was, a was another game, um, but it was like a cinematic trailer announcement. I'm not completely sure what it's what it's about. It's by a new studio, Midwinter Entertainment. Uh, it's a multiplayer survival shooter uh, with space rangers that crash land on Earth and everything like that. Uh, the mo next, the most thing I was excited for, and I was, I got hyped during my 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 live stream was Crash Team Racing Nitro Fueled, the Crash Team Racing um, remake. I'm so excited. Uh, the game comes out June uh, 21st. Oh, by the way, uh, Far Cry New Dawn comes out February. Um, yeah, but Crash Team Racing, man, I can't wait for that. It had, it, they confirmed online multiplayer. It even has split screen, you know, throw, a throwback feature. So I, I just, I'm just ecstatic for that. I can't wait to play online. Hopefully they've kept, kept like the, you know, the racing mechanic code that's the same pretty much. Um, Outer Worlds is a new game by Obsidian. You know, people, Obsidian is becoming the new, you know, darling child in a way, um, because people feel like they made the last far, uh, Fallout game. So anybody who hates Bethesda right now loves Obsidian. Um, so their new game is called Outer Worlds, and it has like a, it's a first person, it's a first person game that has like a Borderlands feel to it. Uh, people are saying, um, single player shooter on a di on a distant planet. It looks cool. I, I, I'm, I'm interested. Uh, the Last Campfire uh, is a game made by uh, Hello Games. I, th I think it's made by my yeah, it's made by Hello Games. Um, not something I'm really interested in. Uh, PUBG New Winter Map. PUBG is on PS4, of course. Uh, 
I'm I, I like PUBG on PC. It it had its moment, but it's something I am definitely no longer interested in uh, at all anymore. So yeah, and I I have no interest in even trying that on PS4. Uh, Ashen, this game has been officially released now, right? Ashen is a Dark Souls style RPG. Um, that got like stealth release. It's now available on Xbox One and PC. People have been waiting for it for a while. Uh, Dread Wolf Rises. Dread Wolf Rises. Dread Wolf Rises. Um, Bioware is a game that Bioware Bioware uh, teased. Um, the trailer didn't really really tell us much though. We just know it's a it's a Bioware game. Um, yeah. So th this is probably the you know the 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 Dragon Age game that they were teasing. Pathless. Pathless is a game um, from the creators of Abzu. Um, it's an adventure game with you know an interesting art style, you know beautiful music and everything like that. Uh, yeah. Mortal Kombat 11. We got a cinematic announcement trailer for that. Um, these cinematic trailers usually hint towards how different the gameplay will be because usually you know each. Mortal Kombat they don't they don't make it the same you know uh, mechanically they try to introduce some type of new feature to differentiate it from from the last one I won't be buying Mortal Kombat it's not you know it's it I like Mortal Kombat but I know it's not one of the things I'll really have time to play honestly so it's not something that I'll be buying Psychonauts 2 not game I'm not interested in uh, Fortnite the block was introduced not so I don't care about Fortnite. I don't like it at all. Rage 2 coming out May 14th, something I'm very excited about. Already got that, you know, pre-ordered. Green Man Gaming was pretty much having a a sale if you pre-order uh games on Green Man Gaming right now, you could uh get 10 to 20% off depending on the game. So, I pre-ordered pre -ordered a whole bunch of games to get that discount because I know the, you know, there are some games I'm definitely going to want. Rage 2 was one of them. So, I'm very excited for that. Uh, I was one of the people who defended Rage. You know, I, I didn't think the first game was as bad as people said it would be. And even if it was, I still felt it had the potential to be much better. So, uh, it's definitely a game I'm very excited for and it's coming out May 14th. Um, Joker is going to be in in uh, is going to be Smash uh, Bros uh, Ultimate DLC. That's good for people who care about that. So uh, it seems like Epic Games lined uh, the pockets of Jeff Jeff Keighley because we saw a lot of promotion for um, Epic Games Store, uh, and uh, you know all of these damn publishers are launching their own you know proprietary store. Uh, Journey, I, I don't know. Was was Journey even made with their engine? Because I think I saw Journey is going to be in their store, and we saw a whole bunch of other games are going to be in the in the Epic Games uh, store. Um, so yeah, anybody that uh, you know wants to check that out. There was a moment towards the beginning of the show. I think they opened up. Phil Spencer, Sean Layden, and Reggie fils -Aimé were all on stage together. You know that was a big moment for people. Um, you know people were saying, oh, you know these heads of all these competing companies are. Are cool. Why can't we get along? I'm gonna keep it real with you, Chief. I don't. I don't want people in this community to get along because that's what makes it exciting. Y'all, y'all can keep pretending y'all want this community to be peaceful and all, and all this kumbaya shit. Listen, what what am I gonna be laughing at at work when I'm bored? You know, okay. What am I gonna be laughing at on Twitter if I don't got these fanboys fighting each other? Let's be real. That's not what really what we want. We don't want shit to get to an escalated level where dudes actually trying to fight each other. But these jokes, of course, yeah, we want these. We want these jokes. We we gotta get these jokes off on each other. We want fanboys to be clowning each other. Forget what you talking about. Okay. That's let, let let leave the professionalism up to the heads of these companies. We got to get these jokes off. Strangers are thir there's a Stranger Things uh you know throwback style uh 16 bit video game. Atlas is a game made by the creators of Ark Survival uh Survival Evolved. Um they said it's a much bigger game than that. It's an open world survival MMO. We also got like a, a an Anthem story trailer. I'm still skeptical about Anthem. By the way, I'm in the Anthem beta or Al Anthem alpha, so I actually get to play it tomorrow. I'm still very skeptical about the release date. I don't know. Like, and they uh, they asked uh, that one of the developers last night. And he was like, "It's coming out February," and he was like, "Yeah." And I'm like, I don't know. Didn't seem like a lot of confidence in his voice. I feel like that get, Anthem still might get delayed. But um, and 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 we're playing an alpha. 
a few months when it's supposed to come out in February? Shouldn't we be playing a beta technically? I don't know. It's I feel like it's either coming out too early and, and it's going to be like very incomplete or it, it's going to get delayed. Um, uh, we got Stanley Parable, uh, Extra Deluxe Edition, some shit. Uh, Journey to a Savage Planet. That's a stu That's by a new studio called Typhoon Studios. Um, founded last year by uh, Far, Far Cry 4's uh, director. Um, Among Trees. Uh, I'm not sure. It's, so Among Trees is apparently is, is a sandbox survival game. So, you know, a lot of this stuff didn't really tell us much or, or show us much. So we just have to go off of, like, basic teasers and stuff. Devil May, Fi Devil May Cry 5. Uh, the demo is actually available on Xbox um, right now. And uh, Ancestors, so Ancestors is a, another open world survival game. Um, like we don't got enough of those already. So yeah, that is pretty much a recap of most of what we saw at the 2018 Game Awards. So it was it was pretty decent. You know, I, I wouldn't say this show was absolutely terrible. It definitely had its lows and, you know, its lulls where it's like, okay... I'm kind of ready for this to end. It ran a little late. It felt a little boring at parts. Um, but it, it, I just think they need to they need to figure out how to condense it. I know they got to pay the bills and everything like that with the with the promotions and you know the sponsorships and the, and you know and the and the commercials and all that. They got to pay the bills. But uh, listen, you got to find a way to shorten that show a little bit, condense it because it started at eight eight thirty. And it ended at twelve, I believe. So that's what three and a half hours. Yeah, I don't think a game award should be that should be that short. But uh, there were some things we didn't see. People were hoping. Uh, some people were hoping for you know um, like Metroid uh, a Metroid Prime announcement. I know a lot of Nintendo fans were hoping that would be there. And there are a few other things that uh, people were hoping for that uh, they didn't see. But um, I guess we gotta wait till E three. So yeah, let me know what y'all thought thought about the awards. I uh, appreciate all y'all. Love y'all. Uh, make sure you hit the like button, hit the notification bell, and um, yeah, check out. Make sure you watch out for some of my um, future videos. I got my Battlefield uh, Five review coming pretty soon in the next few days. I got my top ten uh, games of this year coming out. My top ten most anticipated games for next year. Also got my Dark Siders Three review coming pretty soon, most likely whenever THQ decides to finally fix this game-breaking bug I'm experiencing. But they, re like I said, they replied to me back and said they're working on it. So whenever that is. But yeah, um, thank y'all for watching. I'll catch y'all in the next video. Peace.